Hey folks, this is Arun Tharaviyam and I am a simulation product specialist with Go Engineer. Today I will be going over assembling this blue rubber o-ring over the groove of this shaft with SOLIDWORKS simulation. I will be using the nonlinear analysis capability in our simulation portfolio to set up the analysis. This way we'll be tracking the component stiffness change during the assembly process yielding accurate deformations. Note that we'll be using the features listed on the screen in the setup. Typically, this analysis would involve assembling the O-ring onto the shaft through displacement inputs. But here, we're going to start with the interference in the components and have the software resolve this interference to study the resulting stresses. The strategy would be to thermally expand the O-ring and contract the shaft until the two components align, hence resolving the interference and yielding the stresses due to the shrink fit. In an attempt to simplify the analysis, I have created a configuration that has half the model removed across the symmetry plane. To further simplify the analysis, we will be using the 2D simplification technique. Here, the axisymmetric simplification will be used so that the assembly is inherently prevented from rotating about its axis. Now to execute this thermal expansion and contraction, it is essential to define the thermal expansion coefficients for the two parts in the material properties. Notice that we will be using a hyperelastic Mooney Rivlin model to simulate the incompressibility of the rubber ring. Also notice that we have a non-empirical value for the thermal expansion coefficient. The goal here is to thermally expand and position the components and not to determine their actual response to temperature, so any value here should do. Once the material assignments are complete, we will have to assign the contact conditions between the interacting surfaces. A no penetration contact type will be used here. In addition to this, we will be suppressing the global bonded contact condition as well. This is to avoid the fusing of any overlapping nodes automatically by the software. As an added precaution, an allow penetration contact set will be added to the two overlapping edges, again, to prevent the nodes on these edges from fusing. Now boundary conditions. We will be using the roller slider constraints to prevent the axial motion of the component. This permits the axisymmetric model to expand only in the radial direction for the interference fit. Time for the external loads. We will apply a positive temperature to the O-ring to induce a positive strain. We will also modify the time curve to start the analysis at this temperature and gradually bring it down to zero strain temperature. For simplicity, we will assume that this is zero degrees Celsius. In order for the shaft to contract, we will apply a negative temperature and modify the time curve as before. Note that we will have to specify the zero strain temperature as zero degrees Celsius in the solver properties for all this to work. Finally, we will mesh the analysis with the appropriate refinements in areas that are critical to the solution of the problem, especially the contact surfaces. Now on running the setup, we will see that the solver starts the first time step at the non-zero temperatures and gradually brings the system back to zero strain temperatures. This way, at the end of the solution, i.e. the last time step, the thermal strains in the model are completely removed and the stresses induced are purely from the interference fit. Finally, we can use many of the post-processing options available in the software to study stresses, strains, and displacements in two dimensions or three. Now, SOLIDWORKS simulation offers many features that gives you insights into the structural performance of your products. Now, this has been a quick tip video to demonstrate the non-linear analysis capability with some unconventional setup methods. Again, this is Arun Tiraviyam, and thanks for watching.